Hi, this is Robbie again. Today I want to talk a little bit about flash, on-camera flash versus a speed light. Why pretty much all professionals, whenever they have, whenever they're forced to use a flash at an event that is not studio strobes, they'll always go with a speed light. They'll pretty much never use the on-camera flash except to trigger their speed lights. So let's try and demonstrate the different type of light and different type of shadow and the different abilities, different powers that uh, a speed light will give you versus the on-camera flash. So first I'm going to have my A77 set on a tripod shooting pretty much straight at me and we'll demonstrate the on-camera flash. Alright, so right now we have the A77 set up with the pop-up flash on. So let's see what that looks like. So we have a few problems with that. Uh, first, the light is flat. I look kind of like a deer in the headlights. It's not very flattering light. It's coming straight at you. And it's not soft. Second, the shadow. It is really bad. It's a really sharp, harsh shadow. And it's going straight behind me. So you get this funny outline of people. And I'm arm's length. I'm three feet from the background. So depending how close your subject is or how far away, that shadow will get worse or worse. So another issue, I have a 24 to 72-8 lens on here and the flash just isn't far enough away. You're seeing the shadow of the lens hood being cast on my chest. So that's not good. The fourth potential problem is red eye. I don't think it appeared in this particular picture, but the closer the flash source is to the lens, the more likely a reflection is going to be cast so you'll have red eyes in the subject. That's why with a speed light, it's, the light source is further away, so you're much less likely to have a red eye. So now let's put this on, facing straight at me, and we'll see how this changes things. Alright, now I have my speed light mounted on top of my camera. This is the biggest Sony speed light they currently have, it's an AM58 I believe, so it's very powerful. Right now, it's currently set all TTL, all automatic, and facing straight at me. We'll see what kind of light this produces. So straight away, we've made a couple improvements. First, there's no shadow being cast by the lens hood um, on my chest, because the light is quite a bit higher than the pop-up flash. Second, though, because the light is quite a bit higher, the shadow being cast by me is a different. It's slightly better, still not great. And the light quality itself is a little bit better, but still not great. So that's with the flash pointed straight at me. The second thing you can do with one of these speed lights is it's directional. You can aim it, you can point it at the ceiling, which is really handy. Most indoor places will have a ceiling that you can bounce off of. You, you're going to get a color cast of whatever color wall or ceiling you're bouncing off of. This happens to be white and probably a nine foot ceiling. So I'm going to point the speed light straight up. And because it's TTL, it's going to meter, it's going to figure out it needs to adjust its power levels. It's going to have to pump out a lot more power to bounce off the ceiling and eliminate the entire room. But it's going to change the shadow and quality of light dramatically. So let me point this straight up and we'll see what happens. All right, and here we go straight up. And with the speed light pointed straight up, there's a dramatic difference. It looks almost like studio lighting. It looks so much better. There's no shadow being cast behind me because the light hit the ceiling and just illuminated everything pretty much evenly. And there's no shadow cast on my chest. The light just looks a lot better. There is slight shadows underneath my eyes just because the light is now coming from the ceiling. So that's something to keep aware of. Another thing that one of these high-end speed lights will give you is typically they'll have a built-in mini little bounce card which attempts to solve part of the problem with the shadows underneath the eyes. It's going to bounce most of the light off the ceiling and give us that cool light but also a little bit is going to bounce straight at us which should help with a little bit of fill light. Let's see what that looks like. So now shooting with the speed light still shooting straight up, but it's mini bounce card out. And that did help. It put a little bit more fill underneath my eyes, and since we're shooting in raw, we can totally open that up. 
Another thing that you can do with speed lights is you can attach a little modifier. This is the only one I have, but there's a ton of them that are really cool and can make the light quality even a little bit better. So we'll do a light diffusion dome like that. I'm still going to point it straight up, but this should diffuse the light, put a little bit more fill in my face. So we'll see what this produces. Shooting with the speed light straight up and the diffusion dome. So with the diffusion dome, it now basically filled in completely underneath my eyes. The shadow underneath my chin is less. There's a lot more directional light coming at me. So there you have a few quick examples of the difference between on-camera flash and a single speed light still on camera, but being pointed and used in different various ways. I hope you found this helpful. Like or comment below. Thanks.